Good afternoon, friends. This is Pastor Ensley, and uh, I today on Sunday am recording the midweek devotion for June 2nd because I will be on the road. So uh, God bless you as you listen to this, and uh, I will see you live again on the night for midweek devotion. So let's begin with a prayer. <clears throat> Come, Holy Spirit, set your church on fire. Strike it as lightning hits a tall tree. Burn away the structures and consume the shame of our holy systems. Come to us in Jesus' name and blow away the cobwebs of our stubborn past. Come and blow us up. Winds of change pursue us and disturb our calm. Teach us what true love is. Take our hearts by storm. Come, Holy Spirit. Convict, convert, and consecrate us. If the doors of our heart are closed to the coming of your Spirit, then break them open and come in and never leave us again. In Jesus' name, amen. Our reading for today is from the first book of the Bible, from Genesis, the third chapter, which should be a familiar chapter, um, <clears throat> beginning at verse 8, which is the story of the fall and God's promise of a Savior then to Adam and Eve. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord called to the man, Where are you? Adam answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And God said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? And Adam said, Well, the woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? And the woman said, Well, the serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed above are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will, you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. And then the Lord God makes, follows up in Genesis 3.21, the Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. You know, many people <clears throat> insist that our God is aloof, aloof or far off or unconnected with his human beings, his human creation. But this text tells us something quite different. In the beginning of Genesis, we have God creating the heavens and creating the earth all in six days. He calls into being the stars of the sky, the many different universes that are out there, the fish that swarm in the seas and the oceans and, and everything in between. It was a grand and lofty work, filling the universe with galaxies and planetary systems and a world like ours. It was certainly no small feat. And to show us how much of a massive undertaking it was, God took a day of rest. He rested from his labors on the seventh day. But creation wasn't just about the imagination and the, and the work of calling the world and the universe and everything in it into existence, as awesome as that is. Creation was also about appointing something, someone, a being to oversee all that he had created. 
And so God made man, the pinnacle of his creation, and he created us in our own image. And he had very special plans for us. Human beings, as human beings, we not only bear the image of God, but we were given dominion over his creation. And with this delegation of power, God was not only pleased, but he declared that it was very good. So far, so good, right? Well, not so fast. Placed into what had to have been an idyllic paradise of unbelievable beauty, unbelievable tranquility, mankind, man and woman, were given a simple directive. You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will surely die. That sounds plain, and it sounds simple enough. But in time, man and the woman that God gave him found a way to mess it all up. Twisting God's commands, they got greedy and lazy and big-headed, and the, and the universe still groans with the horror of their disobedience. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized that they were naked, and so they sewed fig leaves together to make coverings for themselves. Adam and Eve's blatant disrespect for God and their slick duping by the serpent left them naked and afraid. That single act undermined mankind completely. A fruitful life of keeping God's garden in his company, company had, been <clears throat> had been sabotaged by their deliberate act of disobedience. God's plan was foiled. And indeed, the wheels were set in motion now, rather than running to a sovereign king of creation, they ran from his presence, thinking some leaves would give them the secrecy that they all of a sudden sought. And although their sin alienated them from God's presence, God's care for them didn't end there. There was one more act of creation in store. The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. You see, our God never stops giving. Even if we turn aside, even if we bet rebel, even if we run away, God covers us in his love over and over again. He did it in the garden. And he did it once more on the cross of Calvary. God is always on our side. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how much will he also not, along with him, graciously give us all things? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, your mercy knows no ends, no bounds. Thank you for covering us in your love over and over and over again. In Jesus' name, amen. The song that I've cho chosen for today is <clears throat> one that I'm sure is familiar to you. It's called My 
song is Love Unknown. Because really that is our song, the love of God, over and over and over again. My song is love unknown, my Savior's love to me, love to the loveless shown that they might lovely be. Oh, who am I that for my sake my Lord should take frail flesh and die. He came from his blessed. Excuse me. He came from his blessed throne, salvation to bestow. But man made strange and none the long for Christ would know. But oh my friend, my friend indeed, who at my need his life did spend. Let's praise God in Psalm, Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights above. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his heavenly hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heaven and you waters above the skies. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for at his command they were created and he established them forever and ever. He issued a decree that will never pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures, and all ocean depths, lightning and hail, snow and clouds, stormy winds that do his bidding, you mountains and all the hills, fruit trees and all the silt, cedars, wild animals and all cattle, small creatures and flying birds, kings of the earth and all the nations, you princes and all you rulers on earth, young men and women, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted, his splendor is above the earth and the heavens, and he has raised up for his people a horn, the praise of all his faithful servants of Israel, the people chose close to his heart. Praise the Lord. Here ends the psalm. Let us pray. O God, our Master in heaven, make us fair and just in our dealings with others. Keep us persistent in prayer for them, alert to their needs, and constantly thankful. Open doors for us to proclaim the message about the love of Christ. Help us to speak as we should to make it clear. Keep us wise in the way we act towards those who do not believe. Help us always to make good use of every opportunity we have. And let our conversation be attractive and inspiring. Teach us how to give the right answer to everyone. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, my friends, May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you always. Amen. God bless you and thank you for being with us, and we shall see you next week. Have a great day in the Lord. Good day.